she was to a terrorist over, over in Syria. She is being groomed. She is a child, she is a child abuse victim. Now, for us, and, and the second issue is, do you think, regardless of how, of how bad she is, let's say she's completely evil, she do, is. do you think we as a country should be exporting our criminals to other countries? I do not want these criminals back in this country because I think they're so, a serious so terrorist problem. risk. So they're a serious this, terrorist this risk. This woman was part of a death cult. Yeah. Let's just remind people of what they did. They hacked men's heads off in the eyes of the world. They burned people alive. They, they buried women and children alive, but not before raping them first. And the very idea that the women who married these guys, who saw all this, and as Andrew's just quoted, were actually involved in some of these crimes. You can't just say that, that, you know, that we have to be civilized about it. Why should we? She did say she was asked in that first interview yes. about the beheadings, and she said, I'm, she said, I'm okay with it. It's Islamically allowed. You want her back? Yeah. I think we can all agree that Islamic State are grotesque and abhorrent and uh, absolutely reprehensible what they did in Iraq and Syria. As to Shamima Begum, she's a 15-year-old. Clearly, she was radicalized in the UK. Anthony Lloyd, the Times journalist who interviewed her, um, said she, even then, she showed clear, four years after joining Islamic State, she showed clear signs of being radicalized, of being groomed, and she should be de-radicalized. But I think the key thing here is that we do not get to decide who is a citizen and who isn't on the basis of our feelings. That's just not how the rule of law works. We do not get to make people stateless. You know, having citizenship, <laughs> let me finish, <laughs> having citizenship is an inalienable yeah. Yeah. right. It is in the UN Declaration of yeah. Human Rights. Yeah. It is one of the most fundamental sure. rights, is the right to citizenship. And we do not get to make anybody stateless, well, regardless you, of what we feel. But also, about the British Nationality Act says, it says, you can be deprived of your citizenship if it is not conducive to the public good. And Her presence in Britain and that is was, not conducive and to the, the public 2014, good. 2014, when Theresa May introduced that amendment, she did it on the basis of people who were not born in the UK. I'm not saying it was right. I think it was deplorable anyway. Well, but, but specifically, the caveat that she gave, we have not applied to right. you. Well, let's have a caveat. I just want to, let's just hear. Okay. Let's hear from the woman herself talking to Sky News earlier this year. I think a lot of people should have like sympathy towards me for everything I've been through. You know, when I, when I, I, I didn't know what I was getting into when I left, and I just was hoping that maybe me, for the sake of me and my child, they, they let me come back. Because I can't live in this camp forever. It's not really possible. In various interviews, it's been put to Shamima whether or not she was actively involved with ISIS, and she has categorically denied it. But I bring you back to the main point. Mm -hmm. Let's say she's evil, let's say she's, uh, she's a terrorist. Do we have the right as a country to export our criminals to other countries say, they're not our problem, even though she was raised here, even though we are the ones who allowed her to be radicalized and allowed her to be so taken in with us. Is it our, and I'm not, no, 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 I want to come in here. You can't so you are actually saying this is our fault that she decided to leave this country? I'm saying that if we, if we, it is our responsibility to ensure that vulnerable people are not exposed to terrorist propaganda. So that, that, I just want to take a point as well on the grooming thing. Are you saying that because she was 15 years old, she didn't know the difference between right and wrong? She didn't know it was wrong to hack someone's head off. She didn't know it was wrong to burn someone who was going to be in a cage. I'm not going to put thoughts into her head, but the people who have interviewed yeah. her, and let, let me tell you, let me finish, Carol, okay. well, have said that she was radicalised. And listen, she is a British citizen. She is our responsibility in the same way that we would not want other countries yeah, to do that okay. back but to us. We talk about journalists who have interviewed them. Louise Callahan from the Sunday Times interviewed a whole load of jihadi brides from Britain. And she said most of them were lying through their teeth when they said they had rejected ISIS. And our security services here already have said that, that when they come back, they are very likely to have been ra they're very likely to still be radicalized. And more importantly, it's going to be very hard to gather evidence against them to bring a prosecution because it's impossible to do. Rachel, one thing, and indeed Femi, you say she was a 15-year-old, she was only 15 year old. Hold on. There's a 16-year-old to whom the whole world is listening, and they're forcing exactly. to go out in the pouring rain and recycle different bottles yes. of it's called Greta point. Thunberg, who very apparently can point. influence the entire planet. Yeah. So we can listen to one 16-year-old, but another 15-year-old is just some naive little kiddie who didn't know. I wonder. I hear, I 